Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you're located in this world, I'm happy that I get to share uh, this case with you and that you're watching my video. Thank you again very much for your support. And um, I sincerely hope that you, I'm helping you to become a better dentist and better radiographic diagnostician. In today's video, I'm sharing you a teenage uh, of patient's reconstructed panoramic image uh, involving a dentigerous cyst. So the first question here is, where is a dentigerous cyst located at? Um, when you look at this, we see that mandibular second molars are mesially tipped bilaterally and they appear impacted. Um, and we have developing crowns of third molars bilaterally as well. And um, based on my experience, I think most dentigerous that I've seen have been uh, third molars. But uh, in this case, that's not the case, and which is what makes this case more interesting. Um, the the location of the dentigerous cyst is on tooth number 18. And one way to have found that out is that um, there is a, a radiolucency, or you could have said bone loss, the mesial of tooth number 18, whereas that's not the case. We see the outline of the follicle that's very tightly wrapped around the crown. However, we don't see the follicle that is right next to the crown, but uh, now you know that this is the outline of that cyst. Um, but you know that may not have been apparent to you because it's certainly possible to have uh, periodontal bone loss when you have an impacted tooth. You know you're unable to clean this area well, then you could certainly have periodontal bone loss, right? So um, that's not the only reason to say this is a dentigerous cyst, but definitely an area that should have uh, come across to you as a, a a potential radiographic feature of dentigerous cyst. So um, like I almost always do, let's go ahead and take a look at this from the axial plane. And I'm going through the mandible in the up-down superior inferior direction. And here we have in, impacted tooth number 18. I put my crosshair right on tooth number 18. And there is that corticated radiolucency extending anteriorly to involve the distal root of uh, number 19 and that it's extending buccally that has caused some thinning of the buccal plate. Do we see any resorption of the root? Let's find out. While the lesion itself is closely located over, over the um, buccal surface of the distal root right here. Uh, and again, we see that it has caused a thinning of the buccal plate, but we do not see, or at least I don't see evidence of re resorption. What about the displacement of the tooth? Um, I think it's hard to say. Again, when I am obsessing, uh, assessing for that, I always have to use the unaffected side as my reference and um, the location of the, the root come within the ridge is very, very similar. I have to agree that this is more lingually located than the other side, but is it really due to the displacement of the lesion or maybe that's just the way that this tooth is erupted, right? So it's, it's not entirely clear. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, rotate the volume to see if I can better demonstrate the relationship of the lesion relative to the crown of a tooth. There you go. So here's a lamina dura. And in a healthy uh, or normal follicle, it should again 
should wrap tightly around the crown. Just look at the developing follicle of number uh, 17. It should be very close to the follicle. However, in this case, if you can follow the lamina dura, it expands anteriorly and inferiorly like this, right? And that should be a very big clue as to this could be something else, something other than just normal follicle. How about I measure the distance? Let me put this away. So I'm measuring right about six millimeter from the edge of the follicle or edge of the corticate border, pericoronal radial lucency to the crown and that's six millimeter, right? So um, obviously I already know the diagnosis and so do you. However, if we didn't know that, this will certainly be um, worrisome. Um, based on the textbook, it's about five millimeter is kind of cut off line for being normal to hyperplastic follicle. Once it becomes greater than five millimeter, I, uh, we, I can't completely rule out hyperplastic follicle, but you know, I'm really starting to think about leaning toward antigenesis. Also, shape of the, um, the expansion would be very helpful. Hyperplastic follicles that I have seen, you know, it's, it, it's a generalized enlargement of the follicle, whereas here we have this asymmetric enlargement of the follicle, right? We can always learn uh, more about the lesion by comparing to the normal side. So why don't we go ahead and look at the other side as well? So let's see. So this is the unaffected side, right? Unaffect, unaffected, healthy side. And you look right here. That space is we're probably looking at like less than a millimeter, right? <laughs> so that's uh, what a normal uh, follicular space should look like. And what about here? Okay, about three to four at most, right? So, um, yeah. Uh, This is diagnosed as dentigerous cyst and a very commonly seen uh, on a tooth that is uh, impacted. So if you have an impacted second molar, third molar with an enlarged appearance of a follicle, always be suspicious of dentigerous cyst. Is it always dentigerous cyst? Of course not. It could be something else. Uh, you could have pericoronal uh, odontogenic care of the cyst as well, right? You could have, again, a milloblastoma that involves the crown of a tooth located, you know, uh, occlusal to um, the crown of an impacted tooth. So that's always a possible. But uh, perhaps the last clue that we can arrest, last important feature, last but not least, right, as they say, Perhaps the most important feature that uh, I saved the best for last is the location of this uh, attachment of the lesion. It extends right at about the level of CEJ, right about here. And that's another classic uh, or classic or characteristic feature of odontogenic care. Oh, excuse me, keep saying that, <laughs> a dentigerous cyst. Um, so, that's what you want to walk away from this case. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.